Okay, so I'm going to use a couple of bits that I've had left over. This was from a, another knife I made some time ago. A bit left over. This was from the cleaver build. That was what was left of that. And I'm going to try and reproduce something like this. This is a knife I made a couple of years ago. And it's the best knife I've got. It really is. The shape is just right. Everything's just right about it. It really holds an edge. But that was spring steel. This is not the same steel, but we'll see. So we're going to get this hot and see if we can uh, thin it out a bit. Now, it's not very thick to start with, it's only about eighth thick. So I'm just wanting to thin out one edge. I don't want to take any thickness out of the, the sort of spine. So I'm just trying to just thin out the back edge a little bit. Obviously with it being so thin, it gets very cold very quickly. So you don't get much time to do an awful lot to it, but we're getting there. You can see that's spread that bottom edge quite a bit. I think that's going to be about it. I think I'll do the rest with a grinder. Otherwise I'm going to end up mucking it up. So I've got fairly fine grit on here. With it being so thin, I don't really want to start off with a hefty grit. I'm just going to do a you know a real rough sort of grind on this by hand. Not no point putting it in my uh, bevel jig really. I'm just taking the, the worst off. I think that's almost there. That'll probably do it. So I'm now going to try and replicate the shape which I've drawn on the end of the anvil there. I drew around the, the other knife. I'm just trying to get somewhere similar. Making these is a bit hit and miss because I don't make many. You might remember I made a, or you may not have seen it, I didn't. don't think I did a video of it. You may have seen pictures of it on my Instagram account. I made a, a rasp knife, or a knife out of a rasp, and put some blue fancy handles on. Well, it looks lovely, but it works rubbish. So, I'm going to try, just, that's why I'm trying to reproduce this one, because it is such a good one. Everything's just about right on it. So I'm just going to put the little hook on the end. I don't want it too tight. If it's too tight you can't uh, sharpen it very well. Plus it, it gets clogged up a bit too quick. I've made it a little bit short, but I think I'm going to leave it at that. The shape is about right compared with that one. It ain't far off. So I'm now just going to roughly again sort of file it up, get towards an edge. I'm not going to put an edge on it yet, but getting that way. the back. I'm going to leave it at that until we've done the heat treatment. So I'm now just going to harden it. Doing this quite slowly because it's so thin it gets hot really quickly so I'm 
heating it up nice and slowly so that it's it sort of soaks. I have sped the film up a little bit. But you'll get the idea. That should do it. Be nice and hard now. Just taking the, the black from the oil off. So I'll be able to see when I temper it. So I can see the colours. I'm just going to do it real down and dirty. The old map gas. Just watch the colours come up. I'm aiming for a sort of a browny colour, but they come up so quick. It's a bit hit and miss, but for this job I'm not worried it doesn't come up too bad it's come up more of a purpley bluey brown but I think it'll do so I'm just going to clean it up again and get ready to attach it to the handle these discs they're like a, a bit like a scotch bright but they're not scotch bright but uh, I use them for all sorts right let's just mark up where I want the handle or where I want to put it in the handle let me show up I don't want to make it the hole too big but I do want a bit of room around it to get some epoxy around it So that's about where I'm going to put it. I've got these um, things there, it's supposed to be a drill and file in one. So this one I'm putting in is uh, a 3mm. Obviously, it's going to make it a little bit bigger. And I'll put loads of holes and then start going from side to side. But unfortunately, which I've just noticed there, I've snapped it. I don't know where that went. A lot of good that was. Cheap Chineseium stuff. Oh, there it goes. Let's see if we're anywhere near. Mm, getting there. Wants to go in about another quarter of an inch or so, I think. Not sure if it needs a little bit more width in the bottom, I think. It feels quite nice. Let's hope it'll work. I'll just put the bit that broke off back in. I hope it's just going to be long enough just to clear out some bits at the sort of the edges and near the bottom. I don't think it'll get quite to the bottom, but it might be enough. And that'll probably do it. Put it in the right way around, that is. I'm going to get it the wrong way around. Yeah, I reckon that'll do. So I'll get some epoxy uh, mixed up. Get that glued in. I'm sure you've all seen this trick before in my previous videos. Put the epoxy in a little baggie. And it's a lot less messy. And you can use it like a an icing bag. And then just bin it.
Make sure it's nice and mixed. Whip the corner off. Squeeze it in. See what happens. Ah, not enough. Okay, That's, the hole's obviously deeper than I thought. Let's find somewhere to put that, covered in epoxy. And I'll mix up a bit more. And you can use the same bag if you're careful. Just make sure when you're mixing it you don't squeeze it out the corner. I found out what uh, antler this was as well. It's red deer, according to my source, where I got it from. Uh, a few of you asked on one of my other videos that I used it on anyway. I can't remember which one now. It might be the cleaver or it might have been the uh, buffer and clencher, uh, clench cutter. That's better. Yeah, that's squeezed up there now. Leave that. Let it dry overnight or so. Right, two days later. I didn't come in yesterday. And that's dried nicely. Although it has still shrunk a little bit more than I anticipated it would. I left that quite proud on Monday. And now it's not. But it's it's got it. So we're just going to... Sand it down a bit, or um, file it down a bit, and then sand it. I'm going to resist using the power tools wherever possible doing this antler because it goes everywhere. Absolutely everywhere. I need a, a shop vac of some sort that I can rig up to it. I've just slung out my last shop back which is about 40 years old just about had it right let's get some uh, sandpaper on it just using an old um, belt sounder belt that's one that's snapped that's still got a little bit of life in it just taking the dirt off really I don't really want to take all the definition otherwise it'll just look like a lump of wood so I want it to still look like an antler I'm just trying to get a lot of the dirt out so now we're down onto the finer paper this is another belt but this is a finer one shape when it's uh, clean. Right, I think that'll probably just about do it. Nice finish on there. I'm pleased with that anyway. Feels nice in the hand. I guess the only thing to do now is try it. So there we go. Nice wide blade on it so I should get plenty of use out of it. Plenty of wear. Nice shape. Hopefully it'll be the same as the one I copied. So it'll hopefully work well I've sharpened it up again and it's sharp enough for me that's good for showing nice and sharp so there we go uh, we we'll just have to try it now so keep an eye out I shall be doing a video where I try this and the clench cutter out. So thanks for watching. We'll catch you on the next one.